Okay, hello, good afternoon, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Balkan Summit for 2022. Um, I'm Madalena Kaili on behalf of the European Law Observatory on New Technologies. Um, here with uh, Rob van Kranenberg from the IoT Council, we organized for another year the Balkan Summit. Uh, it's been actually one year um, since the last time we met online in this forum. And I'm uh, super happy to see you all again and um, uh, progressing this agenda and this discussion furthermore and uh, addressing issues even more complex than uh, we dared to do last year. Um, so uh, for uh, today, for the 2021, we named our discussion the Meta Balkan uh, Summit on Law and Tech because we really want to explore how our region is addressing and joins and uh, leaves um, the, uh, this new hype of the new technologies, the metaverse. And uh, more interestingly, how will um, this new market, this new economy will survive the energy crisis? Uh, therefore, we have with us uh, very interesting experts, but most of all, they do have the overview <clears throat> of the trends and the development of new technologies and the dynamics around them. So despite the um, uh, tragic uh, geopolitical uh, uh, news, um, there is uh, this space where we can feel a bit more creative and uh, see how we can pose ourselves in a more positive and creative way. Uh, I will give my, the floor to Rob um, uh, to welcome you. Uh, and uh, then we continue with our uh, great speakers uh, because it will be a very interesting discussion, I'm sure. Rob? Thank you, Matalena. Um, I'll be very brief because I think it's quite clear to um, all, all the uh, actors and all the attendants here that the relationship between law and technology is becoming even more important with the merging of Internet of Things, AI and all kinds of uh, distributed ledger technologies. And that um, this was also um, uh, seen by the, by, the, by the Commission with the new uh, Resilience Act, sort of Cyber Resilience Act. And uh, so apart from, uh, from the importance of people, of course, there is now the amount of things that we have to uh, uh, look, look after and, and look into. So um, with uh, this said, I think I hand over to the chair of the day. Mr. Bernard Fabianic. Uh, please, Mr. Fabianic, the floor is yours. Good afternoon and uh, welcome as well from my side. I'm happy to be with you again. And this year's topic, uh, will the music stop being it uh, from energy or whatever, I think is quite pertinent, especially with my Western Balkans head on. As far as I understand, we have at least three governments that have been over the last months cyber attacked, uh, severely hampered or still being uh, blocked in their operations. So the metaverse is around us. And uh, like Rob has said, uh, it's coming on the one hand that we are moving to it, but that is also moving on us and is impacting our lives. And of course, in a legal context, uh, what happens if the lawmaker suddenly is being uh, hampered by the metaverse and, and, and how do we resolve these kind of things? So I'm looking forward to it exciting discussion in the next two hours and I'm sure with the great people that we have around this will be also interesting for the audience and with that I think Marie you're the first one to take the floor yes thank you thank you all uh, thank you all for having me today uh, well uh, I couldn't agree more uh, I think that uh, the current situation uh, needs both, you know, both lawyers and, te and technology background professionals to work together in order to, you know, make uh, to have interdisciplinary cooperation and produce um, meaningful piece of legislation. So I will take this opportunity to to present on the ongoing legislative work that we are doing in the Parliament with Vice President Eva Kaili. I'm honored to work with her because she is unique in having, uh, you know, a, a thorough understanding of the technology and you know that curiosity that makes her uh, move towards the future. And on the other hand, 
she is uh, unique in translating her you know her vision into concrete and meaningful uh, piece of legislation so uh, said that uh, eva was the first that uh, she had uh, deep dived in blockchain as she had understood what were the potentials of uh, this technology so she uh, her research resulted to the blockchain um, resolution that was unanimously voted back in uh, 2018. Uh, that resolution triggered the European Commission to uh, come with uh, two proposals, the DLT pilot regime and the MICA proposal for the crypto assets. Well, both of them are uh, milestones, um, in my opinion, because with the DLT pilot regime, we are testing asset tokenization. And what uh, our vice president uh, succeeded to do was to open this pan-European sandbox uh, to new entrants. So in this way, uh, startups, fintechs that are not currently working or operating within the traditional financial market, they will be able to either be licensed themselves in order to uh, operate or to cooperate with other uh, with other licensed entities. So uh, in this in this respect, we are opening the market to new entrants. The other uh, success of um, Eva was that she managed to uh, increase the thresholds that uh, should be uh, should be applied for the uh, transferable securities that would be tested. So she succeeded to increase uh, the shares, the bonds, and use its threshold. But um, in our view, it was uh, much more important the fact that we we increased the bonds um, threshold because, uh, and this is why we have many SMEs in the European Union and in our country, Greece. So these SMEs uh, are not always you know, eligible to get funding from the traditional banking sector. So in this way, they will be able to get funding with a less costly uh, you know, uh, way utilizing DLT technology. And on the other hand, we will have you know, that matching because they would, they would find that funding across EU, because what the DLT pilot regime envisages as well is um, whoever will be operate, will be licensed un, in one member state, it will be, he will be able to operate across 27 markets, so within the whole European Union. So in this respect, um, this was a huge success that she, that she negotiated. Um, the other piece of legislation is the MICA file. The MICA file has to do with the crypto assets. The crypto assets are, you know, the, the European Union is fragmented as regards the DLT environment and the crypto because there are national regimes that do not allow uh, any entity, any uh, crypto asset service provider to operate across EU. They have to get license from different member states and then, you know, uh, operate within a certain member state according to the national regime. So with Mika, uh, we have another milestone. We have uh, you, you, we are unifying the internal market of the European Union. We are creating a crypto asset market. We are regulating how the issuers would operate, um, how the marketplaces should operate, how uh, you know the investor protection issues would be solved and uh, market integrity will be ensured. So this piece as well uh, was a real milestone for, um, for us this year. On the other hand, uh, there are certain developments that are not covered uh, from Mika. And this is uh, the next endeavor, the next work of uh, uh, our vice president. And this is the NFTs, because in Mika, we have uh, some uh, light provisions for NFTs, because to be honest, we were of the opinion that MICA regulation should not capture NFTs because they are, uh, they are a different category that they deserve a custom regime because they uh, are being used in different sectors. Uh, so what we are uh, going to do uh, during the next period is to draft Ms. Kaili will, uh, is mandated to draft the European Parliament own initiative report on NFTs. And in this respect, it, could be, it will be very you know, challenging and very, uh, very 
competing to collaborate with uh, uh, stakeholders and to see in under which conditions and with uh, which safeguards we can uh, produce a future legislation that will capture every aspect of the NFTs because there are NFTs for IP rights, there are NFTs in creative industries, there are NFTs for health to store health data. So uh, these are uh, more or less the developments uh, and our work in the European Parliament. Uh, I'm super happy that I'm uh, working with her because she, you know, she is, um, her vision is translated to concrete uh, work. So uh, that, that is for me for, from now, for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marie, for these insights that really show how the Parliament is really interacting and is at the forefront of technological development. Hello, can you hear me? And now if we go to Professor Viskukis, how does it then turn out on the practical side? I mean, all these NFTs that we have heard, they need a lot of computing power behind them. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, that's, uh, that's exactly right. And uh, the thing is that energy has not been a concern recently, uh, or at least it was not a concern for most of, of uh, those involved in uh, such uh, cases. Uh, so let me make a couple of initial statements. Let me, let me make my, my point first. Uh, the thing is that technologies and uh, generally any kind of initiative, idea or whatever that has real value cannot be killed or cannot be left aside for long in any way. It's a real value that will trigger new ideas on how and where and other wage conditions, and some of them are legal. Uh, I'm addressing, uh, hope, I think this uh, specific audience, and uh, they will live and uh, bloom. So the value uh, uh, makes, uh, makes them live. Uh, what is the difference of such technologies and the discussion today compared to the past? Uh, today, the internet enables really massive participation of stakeholders, uh, which was not a, a case in the case in the, in the past. As stakeholders of such technologies can be considered even, even individuals. So you can take every, every one of us is, can be a stakeholder uh, of such uh, uh, technologies and uh, ideas and uh, concepts, uh, etc. So um, the show is neither wrong nor is it postponed. Uh, it may just maybe needs to be redefined so as to be more inclusive, to make more stakeholders behave like real owners. In other words, to mature. Take the internet. It did not become mainstream overnight. It took uh, quite a decade, almost a decade or something like that. Uh, and it was available as a technology even uh, far more uh, uh, in... To my opinion, this is good. Nobody really wants any hype to stall the huge potential of any great invention. Uh, now coming to the energy requirements uh, of uh, Metaverse, we're talking about the energy required by uh, information and communication infrastructures uh, that um, need to operate uh, uh, such uh, uh, services. Yes. Uh, someone has to pay for purchasing and running every uh, single uh, piece of equipment, which is really expensive, along with networks that need to be faster and more secure day by day. This is not a small cost we're talking about. Uh, take the first computers in the 50s. They required over a hundred of kilowatts to operate. A, a single computer which uh, uh, had a, a very limited computing power compared to, uh, to, to today's uh, uh, um, scales of measures below uh, the current capacities uh, needed a hundred of kilowatts or more. Uh, you might be familiar with Moore's, Moore's law saying that um, the density of transistors in any integrated circuit uh, doubles ev about every two years. Uh, yet there is also Kumi's law, which uh, says that the amount of battery needed for a fixed falls by a factor of a hundred every decade. Uh, take um, recent uh, CPU uh, specifications. They are all about uh, what can uh, what computing um, power can be offered uh, at what energy cost, which was not the case if you took the specification uh, like uh, five, ten, or even more years uh, before. So as you see, the universe finds a way, and we have seen new business models introduced to cover all these infrastructures cost and produce huge profits. For example, 
Google and others offer for free very useful services. Take mail, calendar, contacts, and many others, even more sophisticated services. Uh, all the, these companies involved in offering these services, Google, Apple, uh, Microsoft, Amazon, and others, uh, have known possibly for, from the very... But these services offered at this kind of scale are really energy hungry, which is why they have invested in renewables. And now they collect, uh, I may say. Today, the energy cost for running such services, I dare say, uh, taken with the, the current energy cost, higher than the amortization of the equipment. Uh, this cost is covered, however, by revenue models that have been invented in the way. They were not there before. These are profitable revenue models. Uh, okay, not everybody likes them, and there are a lot of good reasons to do so, but these are viable uh, revenue models. Uh, very few deny, maybe the, 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 these um, revenue models um, are open on criticism, this kind of criticism, but uh, few deny that the real value of uh, the services we're talking about offered to every single individual. Nobody denies the real, this real value. Which brings me to my initial statement. Create something that produces value and the way it would be invented to make it work. There are lots of old time excuses not to operate any ethical, philosophical, political, whatever. Some are really poor as excuses, but some have a really solid ground. My opinion is clear. Energy is not one of them. Energy is not one of the reasons that will stall or delay or whatever any uh, new technology, new initiative that really is to offer. So, um, uh, to conclude, let's, uh, let us focus on how to exploit the possibilities of the metaverse and any other new, for now, new technology in order to produce real value to the people. Let us work together to create real-world uh, success stories, even small ones in the beginning. The rest will come. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was a very positive and encouraging view saying energy crisis is not yet hitting us. So <laughs> it's good to hear. Well, and of course, actually, you... actually it is, but uh, the idea is not to fight obstacles. Uh, yeah, the no, idea is to, to try to, to, to invent new ways to, to go further. Yeah. And if you look at the, the size of a mobile phone and the battery in it, uh, its performance is still going up and the batteries are going down. Still, for this blockchain and, and other stuff that we have heard, there's more needed than a mobile phone, and, and these things uh, consume a yes. lot. Yes, indeed. Uh, I will need to be excused in a few minutes. I will oh. uh, stay for like uh, 10 or 20 minutes, uh, um, uh, but uh, I will need to be excused. I'm really sorry about that. It was a really short notice, and I didn't have time to change my class. Thank you very much. Of course. And I, Thank you so much. I will much. be available for whatever follow-up uh, you wish. Sure. Be happy to discuss uh, um, and change opinions with you or whatever um, you want to, to talk about. Thank you. Definitely. Uh, Bernhard, uh, before continuing with Michalis, uh, allow me to just give you a last minute notice for uh, changing a bit more our agenda because uh, Prashans, uh, he will have to join us after Michalis instead of after the end of uh, the panel discussion, uh, because again, he will be on the flight. So I hope that is okay for everyone. And thank you for your understanding and patience. It will match maybe even better because he will give us an overview because he um, his uh, VC Woodstock um, uh, is a global player. So uh, we'll get a global aspect of what we are discussing now. Uh, after Michalis Nicoletto's speech. Thank you. Is, I see Marie <laughs> wanted to say still something. Excuse me? Uh, Did Marie yeah, wanted to still come back on uh, Professor? Marie, would you like to have a second comment on uh, Professor's? Uh, okay, uh, her <laughs> connection is not that stable. It's fine. She went okay. to the metaverse. Marie? Yeah. It's fine. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we can move on with uh, Michael Nicoletto's um, executive advisor, um, CEO of Qualco. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. You can hear me. 
right? Because yes, there are some connections. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you for the invite. Uh, you've done a wonderful job uh, in this uh, 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 organization you've created. I want to continue on the positive note that Mr. Vescuk is uh, noted. Uh, energy, like any industry, uh, uh, most industries need energy. But the metaverse is just a new one that will need energy as well. So I don't think it's an obstacle. Definitely it's challenging, like it's challenging for many industries, but a lot of big tech are taking a look at it and are recognizing the issue and then trying to mitigate it by trying to focus more on green energy and clean energy in order to address it and to make it uh, more smooth and more sustainable. Uh, technology moves faster than we can imagine. So it's very hard to stop and innovation doesn't stop. Maybe there are obstacles, maybe it gets delayed a bit, but it doesn't stop. And as mentioned in previous, the internet started many years before it became and it got the adoption that we now know. We, we, we used to spend our time on a computer. We now spend our time on a mobile phone. It's most likely that in a few years, we'll be spending most time in the metaverse. And most likely this meeting or this uh, gathering will happen with everyone having VR glasses and we'll feel that we are at the same room and we'll be close to each other even though we're in different countries and different spaces. So that's what the metaverse is about. The metaverse has a lot of good things. For example, the, 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 it could reduce energy consumption. We would need to travel less. We would need to have less meetings face to face because we could do them uh, as we do it now. But uh feeling like we're close to each other with the technologies that are going to be put in place we're still not there yet it'll take a few years to get there but i think it's it's the the way forward and uh, although the metaverse is a part of web3 where the the key part is that there's ownership uh to the user and the user owns his personal data money virtual assets and that's the difference between Web 2 and Web 3. And Metaverse is a part of Web 3. And that's where we're moving forward. And the EU has done an excellent job in protecting property and personal data. And I think it's on top of this. So I think Europe will be a leader in what when it comes to legislation. Maybe technologies are a bit behind in terms of the European Union, but in terms of the legal part, it feels to me, at least I'm not a legal expert, but from what I've seen, what I read across uh, all uh, continent, the EU feels to be, seems to be ahead in that space. So I think this is very important. And Metaverse and Web3 and the blockchain give an opportunity to countries like uh, in the area of the Balkans to leapfrog and to skip the intermediate uh, technologies that used to be in place and can do a very good catch up and get to the next round because the technology that we use today might not be uh, appropriate for the future. So you can build for the next day. So I feel that the energy crisis is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, an issue right now, but it's an issue for everything. It's not an issue only for the metaverse. Uh, I don't think it will stop innovation. I don't think it will stay, it will stop technology. And I don't think uh, human nature can be stopped by such events. It, it, it can delay them, but it cannot stop them. And I think technologies like the metaverse will give an opportunity. And we see this in, uh, in Africa, for example, which is even less developed, where you see that uh, money transfers via crypto, via blockchain facilities have helped uh, the countries to go forward. So we see a lot of aspects on this subject, and I think it's going to be the future. So I'm very positive about it. It might be, it might have stumbled because of the energy crisis, but I wouldn't, uh, I don't feel that this is going to be uh, a reason for it to stop. So that's from me. Thank you very much. Again, a very positive uh, view of the future and, and the impact of it. And actually, I wanted to make a small uh, intervention here on Balkans that you mentioned. And yes, ICT allowing them uh, to leapfrog developments. And the interesting thing on the Balkans is that they combine old with new. 
agri-food with ICT. So actually it's a fantastic opportunity and we are looking forward to see this to flourish. But so much. I agree, I agree, I agree hundred uh, percent. Thank you for your comment. And we see this now in blockchain for uh, with IoT combined in agri, as you mentioned very well. I think uh, we're in the first step, so we cannot see the big picture right now. We can see only a few samples. But again, when the internet started, you couldn't see the big picture that one day you would be living through the internet, let me put it this way. So I think we're, we're still in, uh, if I could put it in a, in a context, I think we're still in uh, 1995 when the internet started. So I would put it in that, in that scale. So there's a lot of room to grow. So that's about it. And this will be that, the journey that ahead a of lot. Yes, that, that helps a lot to reflect on, uh, uh, on this um, comparison. Uh, of conditions and uh, Michalis, you um, in any case, you need to be visionaries uh, to in keep investing and developing uh, technologies as you do. And uh, speaking for the future, uh, Prashant uh, Shwabi Mansan uh, from the Woodstock uh, VC uh, is joining us because they seem to be a bit more flexible with these uh, concepts and uh, more daring to invest and uh, grow uh, their initiatives uh, on Metaverse. So uh, Prashant, I don't know if you can hear us. And I don't know if you could have your camera on. I thank you in any case for um, for trying to be hey, Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. <laughs> okay. Um, no, and, and apologies uh, for, you know, not being able to be on camera. I just found about this okay. last night. I am right now <laughs> at the airport in New York on my way to India. So, uh, yeah. So, it's been a bit of a struggle for me to find a stable place and connection to get onto the call. But um, okay. I really wanted to be here um, to speak to all of you. So uh, thanks a lot for having me. But also kindly excuse me for uh, you, know, uh, you know not being able to be on camera and for you to uh, shuffle around your agenda to accommodate me. So uh, really it's thanks It's great. For that. We connect um, the Balkans and New York and Brussels. Uh, couldn't be more happy for this uh, <laughs> diverse discussion. So please go ahead and give us your insight uh, in brief. Yes, uh, technically you can say you've covered India as well, uh, because that's where I'm flying to and that's where I am from. Um, so yes, uh, quickly about uh, Woodstock. Um, sorry, first about myself. I uh, was an investment banker in uh, Morgan Stanley in London for a decade. And I moved back to India in 2018 to um, you know work in the digital asset space. Um, and now I'm a partner and fund manager with uh, Woodstock Fund. This is the largest um, Web3 uh, fund to come out of India. Um, it's one of the largest in Asia as well. And now we have teams across India, UAE, and also now the US. Um, and uh, we have a very deep thesis on um, Metaverse and everything around Metaverse, which includes gaming, NFTs, infrastructure and tooling etc and uh, we have been investing uh, across the stack as well on the on the metaverse side um, so very pleased to hear all the uh, comments that have been coming through from the panel and uh, the special focus we are uh, having around energy energy consumption and whether or not web3 and metaverse uh, uh, you know utilize a lot more energy than they should uh, great great thoughts and we are extremely uh, uh, completely of the view that um, you know uh, energy efficiency should be uh, highly highly uh, there and also we should be switching to renewable sources wherever possible when it comes to web3 energy consumption as well um, specific to specific to the fund and how we look at metaverse we feel that um, metaverse as a future is uh, fairly inevitable and uh, the reason we think it's inevitable is because the current generation, if you look at them, they are already spending a lot of time um, in virtual worlds, um, such as Roblox, Minecraft, and Fortnite. If you look at the MAUs or monthly active users across these platforms, it's um, almost half a billion people, 500 million. And uh, over 60% of these people are under 15 years of age. So um, what that means is the future generation that starts going into adulthood and starts experiencing, you know, uh, interaction with people across borders 
they are already utilized, used to uh, doing that in virtual worlds like Roblox and Minecraft, right? So for them, the leap and the shift is not as acute as for people like us on this call because we have been used to non-physical uh, worlds in the past. So um, the trend of generations moving into the virtual worlds has already been established and at like a very early age. So therefore, we feel that metaverse is um, inevitable in the future. And where we are right now today is there are two separate sections of the metaverse. One is the centralized versions of metaverse, which is what is being built by your Roblox and Facebook, etc. And there is the decentralized version of metaverses, which is being built by your Decentraland, Sandbox and uh, other, other virtual worlds, right? Um, and of course, the ethos is very different. One of them is within walled gardens and the other is where what is getting built on public infrastructure like blockchain with in trustless mechanisms, right? Um, now, we completely focus on the latter, which is the decentralized version of metaverses. And uh, within that today, um, there is a lot more onus on commerce as opposed to content or compute. And this we feel has to flip for uh, metaverses in Web3 to become real and uh, access a lot more users. Um, I'll just spend a minute here to explain what I mean. Um, so if you look at how, uh, how NFTs and how uh, metaverses are operating today, then it's all about tokens, it's all about speculation, it's all about increase in value as opposed to uh, the actual utility being captured within these NFTs or virtual worlds. Um, the utility can be captured better, we feel, when the content uh, is um, generated in a way to create immersive experiences for the audience and which can also attract your true gamers and true uh, e-commerce um, um, users, etc. into these metaverses, right? Um, one example is this company called Flipkart in India, which is owned by Walmart. They just opened uh, something called a Flipverse, which is a metaverse uh, e-commerce shop where people can go and shop online in the metaverse, right? And this creates a lot more utility now than just having like, you know, taking celebrities and doing drops for them as NFTs. So this is where we feel metaverses are moving. We see a lot more companies coming with um, um, thought, uh, subject matter expertise in uh, gaming and uh, uh, content um, and entertainment and creating immersive experiences in the metaverse, which will tomorrow be built on um, blockchains and create a lot more incentive mechanisms for people to then start having interoperable commerce within these metaverses as well. That is the vision we are uh, focusing on. Um, we do feel that regions specifically can have their own metaverses on blockchains. So in India, for instance, we have um, metaverses being created that are bringing up your uh, mythology and religion and entertainment into these virtual worlds. We, we feel that something like that can come up, say, for example, in Balkans as well, in individual countries which have their own rich traditions and uh, entertainment industries. And uh, these can be built on blockchains that are more conducive to those regions which are adopted by the users over there. So a lot of exploration to be done, a lot of innovation yet to be done. Uh, we are extremely bullish on the future of Metaverse. We put out a very uh, detailed 30-page thesis which you can uh, access from our website as well. Um, across all of Web3 and also which includes Metaverse as a subject. So um, I will take a pause there, um, see if anyone has any specific questions for myself or for the fund or for Metaverse in general. Uh, but otherwise, um, it's been a pleasure to be here and uh, thanks a lot to all of you for uh, having taken the time out to listen to me. Thank you so much. Please give a cookie to this baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, um, for uh, connecting with us and uh, the valuable insights you shared. Uh, I'm sure that we should repeat our connection at some point because uh, uh, the issue of uh, uh, creating the trends for the next generation or uh, um, deciding identity issues on metaverse. It's a whole new issue and debate that I presume it um, can be endless. Uh, but thank you so much because um, definitely uh, we could see all this coming. Uh, uh, you are quite pro progressed in uh, uh, developing the platforms and uh, uh, solutions and um, of course, um, apart from the technological issues or uh, the operational issues, um, 
we have uh, the obsession of finding the legal concerns behind all these new uh, environments. Uh, so um, you will excuse us, us meaning uh, the um, uh, educated on law, uh, and we will try to see uh, which could be the new elements on the metaverse space or the concerns or um, traps or things that we should keep in mind and uh, address as scientists and uh, expect the justice institutions also to address and uh, provide um, clear understanding for the citizens or the meta-citizens. And uh, this takes me to introduce you to Kostantinos Anagnostopoulos, representing ELTA, um, the European uh, uh, Legal Tech Association, who are also supporters of our today's event as last year's. Thank you so much, Kostantino, for being with us. And then we have also Antonios Brumas, um, tech lawyer, uh, representing Ernest Young in Greece. Thank you so much both for being with us. Stefan Sitoratos from uh, Community Alex, another partner of our event, uh, couldn't join, unfortunately. But in any case, uh, I'm, I firmly believe that uh, we can have uh, really important points made by you both. So, Costantina, the floor is yours, and then Andonis, you can do the floor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Madalena, for the invitation. Hi, Rob. Hi, Bernhard. Hi, Antonis. Good to see you again. Well, metaverse and the law, I mean, uh, you know, that's a huge subject to explore. So I would stick, I guess, to name dropping the concerns and our perspective as ELTA. Um, can you give me a second? Because I, yeah. Uh, can you hear me well? Okay, thanks. Um, so um, I don't. We don't really think that applying mutandis, mutandis the current regulatory framework, is sufficient uh, to tackle uh, this new terra incognita as metaverse is. Uh, I think personal data and privacy, biometric data, to be precise, uh, they take on another level when we talk about metaverse. I mean. We are concerned about cookies, but you know when you operate in a very, um, uh, in a very demanding hardware and software type uh, environment. I think uh, you know it uh, it gives a whole other meaning. Uh, child protection, meta crimes like avatar homicides or all kind of torts, theft of virtual goods, virtual skins, regulation of Web three protocols, IP, cyber law, labor law. Let's say. Uh, Mr. Uh, um, uh, I'm sorry, forgot his name. Uh, Mr. Um, from Wood, uh, from Woodstock, uh, the venture capitalist. He mentioned Roblox, so play to earn games, uh, structures of decentralized autonomous organizations, uh, dispute resolution mechanism between users, between users and world corporations and the state. So all these are major legal concerns. Um, I wouldn't say that we have the answer to them. Uh, from an ELTA perspective, from a legal tech perspective, I would say that it is a great forum uh, to experiment for a legal tech experimentation. Probably it's, a, it's an ideal sandbox uh, for legal tech applications. I would focus on two parts um, from a legal tech part. I would say that the most interesting uh, technology uh, from our uh, perspective is online dispute resolution. So I would call it the eBay effect. So uh, small petite transactions that uh, a dispute is occurring and needs a uh, resolution. Um, so instead of me, uh, let's say from Piraeus, from Athens and Bernhard and Mandalena and Antonios and Marie and uh, the venture capitalist uh, from Woodstock, uh, we have a DAO and we have a dispute with another DAO tribe in Roblox or in Sandbox or in the Central Land. And we argue over a um, uh, virtual sale of a virtual real estate. Um, uh, there are already underlying uh, 
dispute resolution protocols, but apparently we're not going to uh, file an application for, uh, let's say, injunction measures in Pireo's first uh, court of instance, et cetera, et cetera. So I think uh, we're going to see a tremendous growth on that respect. And um, another challenge is whether uh, the legal services providers will adapt to this new environment. Um, will they open uh, new offices? You know, will they branch out there? Uh, because it's a new market, new clients, or so new type of clients that require an access to justice mechanism and legal services. Um, but here comes uh, the, main, the main question, how to operate there? Uh, how to staff essentially the providers, the law firms, the law offices? Uh, are these people going to be called lawyers? Do we have to create a new type of a paralegal, like a gamer lawyer, et cetera, et cetera? Um, or a bar association. Think, yeah, exactly. Or a new, you know, virtual uh, paralegal association. So I think uh, the interesting part with the metaverse is that essentially when it comes to justice and legal it seems that the virtual is eating again the physical uh so from the very well-known phrase of Andreessen uh that uh, the software is eating the world so i think the virtual justice when it comes to metaverse because it's so extended i think uh, we'll see a major uh uh a major growth on uh, dispute mechanisms within these worlds. Um, now, we're no experts in energy at Delta, so, but we all understand that uh, there is a vast amount of data processing, data sensors, data centers, um, all these operating layers, whether Web3 centralized or decentralized, uh, the hardware, I think uh, any one of us who likes tech is an optimist, uh, but as a general comment, I think that we already have uh, the gaming community that is a protagonist in this metaverse, let's say growth, but I don't really believe we have an iPhone moment yet for the mainstream people. So I don't really think uh, energy wise we'll have, a, we'll have a problem uh, you know, anytime soon, unless we have a cataclysmic event like a World War Three. So I think the last uh, thing that we should be worried about is uh, the growth perspectives of metaverse applications. Um, and that's all, folks. Metaverse, the new world is here. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> we had that last year. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> But that's no. a good thing. <laughs> exactly. That's a yeah, great thing. <laughs> exactly. So maybe Antonio's first, and then uh, we give it the first try. <laughs> Please go ahead, Antoni. Uh, thank you very much, Madalena, for this invitation, and thank you all for your participation in uh, in the summit, in this interesting summit. Uh, allow me to share my screen to to share my presentation with you, uh, if I may. Um, I am not sure if I will make it though with uh, technology. Uh, we didn't expect to have a presentation, but okay. it's necessary. But, but, no, it's not necessary. Uh, so I can, I, I, I will uh, take the floor without the presentation and the. Um, um, yes, please, because we want our audience I will to focus feel like in we my have contribution a discussion about the today yes. and tomorrow of the metaverse. Uh, we can define the metaverse today as a shared virt virtual realm where people interact with objects, the environment and themselves through digital representations. Uh, but tomorrow's metaverse might be uh, much more different. Uh, it it, it uh, might evolve in, into a fully immersive uh, space in our lives through augmented virtual reality, a virtual economy, underpinned by Web3 technologies like uh, uh, distributed ledgers. Uh, the good case would be that it will be an open ecosystem of interoperable uh, different metaverses, which will also bring uh, a shift in uh, most uh, facets of our uh, social activity. And of course, it will also cause 
uh, different forms of uh, self and collective expression through digital identity and also art. Uh, but uh, the trends and motivating factors which explain the recent hype about the metaverse are both social and technological. First of all, technologies like blockchain, artificial intelligence and uh, big data uh, underpin uh, its development. But uh, we also have a progress in the infrastructures related to the metaverse, like accelerating connectivity, uh, in, for instance, through 5G and edge computing, uh, and the increased capacities of our uh, information technology uh, systems to, to process data. We also have advances in uh, virtual reality and augmented reality equipment. And finally, we have uh, socio-technical uh, changes like the digital transformation in uh, various social and political sectors and the boom in video gaming. Uh, we, we, we can say that the, 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 the metaverse is built upon uh, several layers, starting from the infrastructure, uh, as, as said by Konstantinos, uh, the electronic communication networks, the cloud computing infrastructure and architecture, but also the, uh, the, next to that, we have the human interface, like uh, end-user device, VR headsets and uh, smart glasses, etc. Uh, at the logical layer, we have uh, tools of uh, uh, like uh, distributed ledgers, which cause decentralization and uh, decentralized ecosystems. We also have spatial, sp spatial computing software that performs uh, 3D visualization. And uh, upon these layers, uh, we have the blooming of a creator economy. Uh, uh, tools that help create and monetize, uh, monetize things. Of course, we have uh, discovery tools like App Store, Google, where we can um, navigate and um, uh, use uh, metaverse uh, applications. And finally, uh, we have uh, new forms of uh, human experience, interaction in uh, virtual environments through gaming, shopping, social interaction, social networks, etc. And we have, uh, uh, we have examples of uh, private metaverses at uh, uh, today, like Decentraland, uh, la the Sandbox and the Somnium space, which are open to, to the public. <coughs> but we also have case studies of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, non-technology companies, which are experimenting more and more with the metaverse. For example, we have the launch of a virtual beer by Heineken, the um, submission of a patent uh, by uh, Disney for a theme park metaverse technology, uh, the, um, announce, the, the, the announcement of the world's first Web3 banking platform by Tintra, etc., etc. Of, uh, particular relevance to the to law are the challenges uh, which uh, um, the metaverse gives rise. Uh, first and foremost, the most important is interoperability between different metaverses. Uh, this specific area will probably um, shape uh, the metaverse of tomorrow, either as a, a, an ecosystem of uh, interoperable spaces or ring-fenced private metaverses which will not interrelate to each other. Uh, as in every other uh, digital transformation, data privacy and security uh, will be uh, very important in, in this new environment. And uh, the metaverse will also recast social relations in the realms of reputation, identity and ownership. Finally, for us lawyers, uh, metaverse will make uh, things much more complex in terms of uh, private international law, uh, jurisdiction and uh, applicable laws, but also in law enforcement. In respect of uh, sustainability, there are several questions to be raised. 
will the metaverse increase or decrease greenhouse gas emissions? Uh, the development of metaverse, of this uh, sector of the economy, uh, will require vast new infrastructures in communication networks, processing capacity and end user equipment. This, of course, causes uh, greenhouse gas emissions, but uh, a net zero emissions metaverse still remains possible through savings in energy consumption, self-production of rest energy by market players in the metaverse market, the establishment of carbon sinks and carbon capture facilities, plus the appropriate policies to do that. Uh, will the socioeconomic shifts brought about by the metaverse contribute to the climate crisis or to climate neutrality? This is a big question and the uh, uh, speakers, uh, prior speakers have already uh, given their opinion about that. Uh, my, opinion, my take is that uh, the digital shift to the metaverse uh, may significantly reduce physical resource consumption and uh, result in less commuting or overseas travel, yet uh, it, this might, uh, these positive outcomes might be counterbalanced by uh, our con continuous uh, dependence or in overconsumption. So the future is open also in this uh, case, in this, uh, regarding this question. Uh, the next question is that, uh, about uh, uh, the contribution of the metaverse to uh, the preservation or degradation of biodiversity. Apart from the climate crisis, we also face a, a crisis of biodiversity and the extraction of resources necessary to build the infrastructures of the metaverse uh, have a significant impact on bi biodiversity. We are therefore in need of uh, policies maybe also at the global level, to restore biodiversity, to increase carbon sinks, and uh, regulate negative, the, the worst impact of resource, resource extraction. So after all, what role shall the metaverse play in our collective effort to tackle the climate, cli climate crisis? Can we have finally a sustainable metaverse? We can definitely develop a sustainable metaverse as we have the possibility, we are, it is possible to uh, develop a voraciously polluting metaverse. It is a matter of policy choices and wider social context whether uh, each of these alternatives, alternative futures takes place. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Resonates a lot with me, <laughs> especially the last uh, point. Can we have a stable metaverse? I was tempted to say no, but um, let's see how this evolves in the discussion. But I wanted to link actually the last three presentations, even the venture capital one. Actually, we have venture capitalists banging our door daily because the Western Balkans is where the new gold rush is happening. And of course, they want us to filter out uh, the nuggets for them, and then it's easier to take. So definitely people are seeing the potential. On the other hand, when then uh, Konstantinos is saying oh, we need new types of lawyers to have a eBay conflict resolution, I'm trying to even spin that a little bit further, saying what if an artificial intelligence is doing for a marginal transition a marginal conflict resolution. Can sort of the metaverse even go that far that we say, because we cannot pay lawyers, uh, not top dollar, but uh, at least certain amounts that are beyond the value of the transaction. And you still want to have somehow the conflict. Uh, <coughs> so that will be an interesting concept. And then Antonius was saying, yeah, well, the internet, the metaverse and the uh, all open and this was little me 25 years ago standing in front of my colleagues saying the internet is free and they looked at me and somebody said somebody has to pay the bill and then we are back now to the energy bill and then whatever it is the hardware the environmental the biodiversity bill that uh, we have to somehow compensate for and uh, just earlier this week was in the belgium newspaper 
we need smart uh, tools, IOTs to sort of fight uh, the energy crisis because the heating will be smart and then everything will be fine. And then the second sentence was, yeah, but are they secure? And uh, Antonio, as you were saying, sort of cybersecurity, these are things that maybe we have neglected. And we are taking a, a metaverse, the infrastructure that is running the metaverse, or maybe the metaverse itself as an infrastructure, as a given. And, and you mentioned also sort of fragmentation, different metaverses that suddenly are not compatible with each other anymore simple things that export of CPUs being blocked to one part of the world from uh, the other one. They might develop their own CPUs, their own AI systems, and suddenly we have no compatibility anymore. This fragmentation probably is not very energy efficient, but uh, is one Facebook uh, good enough for everybody? And what are then the legal implications of these kind of monopolies? So this is a Quick throwing to the two previous speakers and maybe then go into the panel. No, I mean, there are some questions here, uh, but you know, uh, this is a discussion about the optimal uh, future that we're all wishing to take place, but what, we, what you described actually, it already exists. We have protocols that we operate on a daily basis whether it's an iPhone, an Android, a Linux, et cetera, and they're not interoperable, or there are partial, et cetera, et cetera. So this is nothing new. It exists. This is how well we had the internet much before GDPR in place. So yeah, this is it's nothing new. So, so I wouldn't say it's a terra incognita like uh, the space world that we have international treaty and projections about what will happen, et cetera, et cetera, you know, when we land on Mars. Uh, but in a way it could, because especially with VR, it's, you know, it's a totally world building, uh, uh, you know, so, you know, you could build essentially hundred Marsies, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so uh, all of these concerns. So for instance, what you said about, and what I commented about the, uh, small petite disputes, etc. Uh, there are so many disputes that do not uh, lead to a court, essentially, that are not resolved. So, so many people, for so many reasons, have lack of access to justice. So, you know, might be the case as well in metaverse, like tourism. We have tens of millions of people, let's say, uh, tourists in Greece, Italy, in the US, etc. So many disputes relate to that. Not all of them are resolved, probably not. And we don't have tourism lawyers, by the way. You have legal services providers that can assist you on the dispute related to your travel, but not like a law firm that is entirely 100% called tourism lawyers. It might be the case also in Metaverse that we will not have Metaverse lawyers. You know, eventually not. Considering so tourists different. and the meta citizens the same as a um, a temporary identity that comes and goes, uh, and the nomads uh, who will, what about those who will uh, move to metaverse completely, because we will have these people as well, um, like a new tribe uh, that will be created, and I cannot even think of having the fragmentation uh, again in metaverse. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> um, we can relate in the Balkans with these things. So uh, uh, um, last night, and uh, it would be one of our speakers, Dimitris Psarakis, but uh, he is flying to Singapore. It's a it's a flight a flight day, I, I presume. Uh, so he won't be able to join us with his final remarks. But he was telling me, meeting a uh, um, professors there, it's becoming a totally philosophical uh, um, question. Is this our second chance to do this right? Uh, so let's see. Uh, Andonis, do you have um, any comment on uh, the comments? Uh, and then uh, go on. Just a, a final note from me. Uh, okay, it's a truism to say that uh, any technology is neither good or bad. 
uh, it's also neither neutral nor neutral. Uh, each technology has uh, capacities uh, and uh, potentials. It's the job of policy makers and, uh, and lawyers uh, to unleash the potential, the positive potential of, uh, the, of the metaverse, whereas uh, handling uh, any negative uh, impact. Uh, markets have, are very good at uh, mobilizing and allocating resources. So they will pay, play an integral role in the development of uh, the metaverse. Uh, but uh, policy making is also needed uh, to um, handle risks, uh, incorporate uh, negative externalities to the to business models, and uh, also uh, make um, 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 uh, different metaverses interoperable. So we are in need of intervention whenever markets cannot uh, produce uh, the most uh, uh, the, 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 the maximize social benefit in uh, in certain areas. And we have to identify these areas. Thank you so much. I, Rob, I don't know if you would like to um, add a comment at this point. No, I fully agree. That's, uh, that, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, I think um, I think this is, uh, this is a key effort and it, 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 it looks like the Commission and the European Union is is um, is is looking at all of this and is is coming with the, with the data act with the cyber security act with the cyber resilience act it seems that there's a, an urgency that is being uh, being addressed and um, i think this is uh, this may be timely and then in order to be timely we need to um, indeed uh, i think have very strong visions to to uh, to, to refrain from this fragmentation that we've seen and um, so I, I think it's a fascinating discussion so far. Thank you very much, Magdalena. Thank you, Rob. Um, Bernard, if you allow me, we'll uh, move on to uh, the panel discussion. Uh, of course, you are mostly invited to stay connected and uh, send your questions. Um, I thank the speakers of the first part of our uh, discussion, uh, Andoni, Costandine, uh, Michali. Um, in Thank case you, you have uh, um, other engagements, uh, of course, we understand and thank you for being connected for so long. Uh, but please stay and uh, uh, add your questions either on the column of questions in the uh, live stream platform or just press the button and interrupt now. Uh, um, I really, uh, we aim to have a live discussion as it if we were in a salon all together without virtual reality, but in the same room. Uh, so um, allow me to welcome on the panel um, Plajo Erdalo from Croatia, representing the Blockchain Association, uh, Ilya Lassin from Bulgaria, representing the Internet Foundation, Ivan Zolizic from Montenegro, representing um, the metaverse platforms he is a pioneer in the area so thank you so much Ivan, for joining us and for your responsiveness zoran tadic um a founder of the tomorrow conference uh, a pool of ideas and talents uh, he he knows better than anyone uh, where all this going and alexa mil the lady of the panel um uh, she's from serbia if i'm not mistaken right alexa and connecting uh, from uh, brussels uh, Wasio, uh, your initiative, uh, yes, uh, promoting the DAO agreements and uh, um, the DAO environment, which is super interesting for lawyers. Uh, but you, you will be asked to give us more insights uh, of uh, your um, routine um, uh, with the space in the space. Uh, so thank you all. Um, we connected uh, on the LinkedIn uh, months ago or days ago, weeks ago. I don't even remember. I don't have the sense of time. So um, excuse me if anything was very last minute for you. Um, but uh, this is it, I guess. There's no clocks anymore. Um, so uh, you are, um, we, we are neighbors. We are so close. Um, and uh, we have... Um, shared experiences of an environment that uh, is so 
diverse, so conflicting, uh, and that makes our collaboration even more, more magical, I, I think, because, you know, I always say that uh, when you are from Balkans, you can fight even for you with yourself. Uh, so you don't need anyone in the room. Uh, so uh, when we collaborate, we manage to collaborate. Um, things are really, really interesting and uh, have a very special and innovative and creative aspect that uh, the world needs to see. So you are, uh, I would say, from the things I, I, I found about you online and uh, the, um, uh, the opportunity I had talking with you, uh, that you are all pioneering uh, in uh, the field. You are pioneers and uh, very brave uh, to invest your time and energy in something like that. So I would like to start uh, uh, with uh, us asking you uh, um, a bit about your endeavors, your initiatives, your projects uh, for the time being, and then go deeper into the discussion with Bernard. Uh, should we start with Alexa? By stereotyping with the ladies first, please. Go ahead, Alexa. Thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you, Jiu, and thank you for inviting me and having me on this panel. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm Managing Director at a CEO, a Brussels-based DAO focused on profit that provides blockchain-based projects with frameworks for compliance, legality, risk management, and prevention. We're an environment which allows decentralized projects to interact with the traditional world and maintain their and maintain a significant level of decentralization while operating in a centralized manner. We do that by providing them with a legal representation. Our mission is to bridge, to be the legal and compliance bridge between on-chain and off-chain worlds. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alexa. Um, Ilya? You suffered the most to connect with us, so please go ahead. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you for uh, the invitation of joining this uh, this summit. Uh, my name is Ilya Lassin, and uh, I'm currently a, a doctorate student uh, that is working on the topic of uh, private international law aspects of uh, blockchain uh, and DLT technologies, and I'm really fascinated by the previous comments of uh, Konstantinos who actually brought forward uh, whether or not uh, civil, uh, such, such, such type of civil aspects such as dispute resolution, uh, consumer online torts and stuff like that happening in the metaverse, whether or not they have some sort of solution or not. Um, and uh, this is a very interesting topic that is currently being handled globally. Uh, and my previous experience actually included uh, me working on a digital pro uh, digital economy project with uh, the Hague Conference of Private International Law, um, where such kind of topics are being brought forward uh, from multiple states. Uh, all, all across the world, there are ideas for um, for conventions uh, in, 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 that, in that direction. Uh, of course, we're all already witnessing uh, different sort of uh, legislations already um, occurring uh, in Switzerland, in uh, the US, in Japan, in Singapore. Um, so there are already some sort of uh, answers uh, that um, can be presented to, uh, to, to, such, uh, to such issues. Um, but yes, uh, being focused on, on the energy aspects of it, uh, we can see uh, how much the civil aspects of, of such of such kind uh, of, of relations can actually have their implications on um, on on the energy sector and how um, it will it will affect the the global stage. Thank you so much, Ivan. Is there a village in Montenegro on Metaverse? Ah, we can hear hello. you. Thank you for the invitation. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, in fact, uh, I am uh, in charge of the, the blockchain and crypto part of the uh, Gaming Village project, which is based in Belgrade, Serbia. But uh, of course, uh, in Montenegro, we are also trying to do something. something. And uh, of course, together with uh, blockchain and crypto, we are in developing uh, the metaverse concept uh, in the village project as well. 
and the game the project uh, it's uh, like uh, building the world's first all in one uh, uh, esport and game center in the world and uh, of course the belgrade will not be the only one the only the only infrastructure project but uh, we plan to do franchising uh, to other countries and we are already uh, discussing with potential investors about making uh, gaming villages all about the globe expect uh, at the north pole as it's too cold there and um, of course this uh, we, we, we're trying to put the whole industry together including game publishers including tournaments including uh, live stream platforms and sponsors and the brands and uh, what, what does the metaverse have to do here? Well, uh, at first, before, before the real estate, before the infrastructure project will be done, we plan to release our platform. In fact, the MVP of the platform is so close and should be, should be finished in the next two to three months. And in this platform, uh, the gamers and uh, the gamers esports players from all around the world uh, can play their famous games not not play their own games not uh, the games which are like childish but uh, counter strike dota etc etc and of course it will allow uh, people from the, the people from rural part of the world uh, can can get scores can team with uh, other players uh, from around the world and uh, eventually participate in the professional esport tournaments depending on their score. Of course, uh, the platform will, will introduce uh, our uh, token, it's uh, Game Village Metaverse token. And uh, of course, we plan to do some strategic uh, partnership uh, with, uh, with uh, leading industry. Uh, experts uh, in building uh, the future metaverse, as uh, the the speakers, the previous speakers mentioned uh, several times, that we still not have uh, the clear vision of the metaverse, uh, and uh, the, the current metaverse projects are not really, really uh, not have utility, not, not have usability. We, we all are seeing uh, news like the central one had 36 visits per day and it's a billion dollar project so we really must focus on on, on the real revenue model as we, we spent like six months with uh, several coding teams with uh, several artists teams in, in order to check what we can build to be interesting, to, to have some utility, and how much it will cost. And uh, at the moment, uh, uh, we found that uh, there is no uh, uh, there is no business uh, plan which which uh, would uh, make the revenue. You know, you, you need to invest so much money, and uh, you can be practically sure that there is no revenue model wallet and if you ask me this is the biggest problem of, of the metaverse nowadays but uh, web 3.0 technology it's it's like already here uh, it, it's like something which can be implemented uh, right away that's why our platform is designed uh, to be used right away and of course it will have the elements of the web 3.0 technology and we will, we will easily uh, introduce that to the, to, to, to the people until the metaverse uh, technology will be possible to be, to be produced uh, and, and with clear revenue model uh, those uh, uh, users of our platform should be ready should be ready for the for the metaverse. And uh, one more thing I maybe I should mention.
question. As, uh, as we are talking about the energy crisis, we have uh, bigger crisis than, than energy crisis. Uh, for example, e-sport players, they should participate uh, at the Olympic Games. Right? And uh, they want big prizes, they're getting big, big rewards. Uh, and uh, they want to be in the Olympic Village, for example. And uh, imagine the people which are not like professional sportsmen, how they will look if, if you mix them with professional sportsmen. That's why the Game Village uh, is uh, introducing all in one platform, which will enable eSport players uh, sleep at the, at the complex, uh, use gyms, use uh, uh, various uh, sport uh, fields, and uh, make them real sportsmen so, so they can enter the Olympic Village together with other sportists. And, uh, also, uh, the kids uh, globally are, are consuming uh, the, the technology too much, uh, especially some countries have severe problems already with, with the, the health of, of the children, which results that in, from 30 to 40, uh, the, the, those young people should be, should be uh, extremely... Uh, uh, workable, you know, that they, they need to, 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 to do their best uh, for that 10 years, and on the other side, uh, they already ill, they need to go to hospitals. And so, so the Ivan. mentors uh, uh, must, must have that physical uh, uh, interaction, and I think that, that that should be the point of, of, of the future mentors as well. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you. You covered already. Add to the end <laughs> the discussion. Thank you. I think uh, uh, if it's the connection or it's my issue, uh, the the sound uh, is not the clearest. Uh, so I may have lost a few words of yours, but uh, we will uh, return to you. Um, can I uh, ask uh, Vlaho and then Zoran, you have uh, the time to give us uh, you have many things going on uh, this uh, season, so uh, I keep you for the end. Uh, uh, Vlaho, uh, welcome. Uh, good to see you Thank again. You. Um, please give us uh, some updates. What are you up to with your association and how are things in Croatia currently? Uh, thank you, first of all, for having me. Uh, since you mentioned Zoran and since what you said earlier was very interesting, you said that all of us are some, in some sense pioneers, right? Well, uh, Zoran was kind enough to invite me to their conference, their re really nice conference tomorrow in Belgrade, <clears throat> which I gladly accepted to speak uh, on one of the tracks. And then, you know how LinkedIn notifies you when someone tags you? And then one speaker, I can't remember who it is, I know I know, I know her, I wrote like, I'm happy that I'll share the floor with industry veterans like myself. So it's, it's a sh <laughs> really short way from pioneers to veteran when you're in the crypto world, you know, when everything uh, <laughs> but, time flies, uh, you are But you're old already. Uh, you see Sorry? my heart in Balkans, big family. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Definitely, but it's easy, it's easy to become, you know, outdated and obsolete in this world, which is uh, when you're my age, I try to associate with, uh, with oh, please. the Don't younger generation. <laughs> Come on, I'm the oldest here, definitely. In metaverse, we'll fix that, okay? <laughs> Please do. Uh, anyway, um, what we're up to is just a short intro. I'm, um, I run my own law firm, uh, which I set up in 2012. Um, it was from the very beginnings uh, specialized for uh, IT, and then it almost exclusively went into crypto back in I don't know, 2016. Um, but what you, what you asked me, the other thing is that we have a small uh, NGO in Croatia. I mean, now it's, it's already uh, growing a bit uh, that we've established in 2017 that I've been running uh, as the chairman. Uh, and it's uh, doing good, actually. I was just this morning, uh, I was at a meeting with a potential client of mine. And I told him honestly, and I'll tell you that I, I really like the bear market because it it purges all the projects that are here just for the money grab which of course happens in the bull market uh, when there's like 20 people a day having the greatest idea of all time that will make us all rich 
and now that like one person a week contacts me but this person is pure gold you know because those that are willing to uh, take a chance in the bear market when you know there's a threat of nuclear war and as a cherry on top of that and uh, energy crisis and uh, inflation and whatnot uh, people willing to develop something to build uh, in this setting uh, you know they make me want to work with them and uh, i gladly take that chance this is from the legal point of view of course uh, but also our association is holding on monday actually the really big round table uh, it's, we call it a regulatory meetup where all the creation regulatory agencies and even uh, law enforcement and tax office and uh, similar uh, parts of uh, shareholders stakeholders uh, of this entire ecosystem uh, called the regulation uh, will take part and we have an open discussion on a panel so yeah the things have been busy but uh, we're not running in circles, I'd say. We're moving moving forward slowly. Great. Thank you. Um, Zoran, you've been quite busy. Tell us what you're preparing. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much, Mantalena, for, for the invitation. And I mean, I know quite a few people from this um, conference. And uh, I mean, you know, We've spent so much time talking in the past several months or even a year and organizing all the things that are about to happen in the next, uh, let's say, year to two years, uh, uh, short term speaking. But yeah, I mean, I, I will shortly cover some of the things that are happening. As you probably know, we organized, um, I mean, first of all, I'm the co-founder and uh, managing director of ITS42 which is a blockchain development company um, uh, working on different types of projects uh, related to healthcare, uh, logistics, and uh, mainly the focus in the past couple of years was building a digital identity platform, uh, something that has been mentioned uh, quite a few times uh, during this um, uh, event. Uh, so I'll, I'll deep dive into that a bit later as well. Um, but also uh, one of the projects that we that we have developed uh, and we are still upgrading it to say uh, is uh, um, award winning um, a private jet booking platform, which is based on green energy. Uh, and our focus is actually exactly that. So to conserve uh, energy and focus it to where it's more needed or use alternative um, you know sources of of resources so uh this is something that is quite interesting and i mean i could talk hours and hours about that but i'm not going to so just <laughs> share the referral link for all of us <laughs> yeah well we we are, we are not there yet i mean we don't want to start with the referrals this is a, a simple booking platform with no referrals so everyone is pretty open we don't want to to offer any type of reward for you know acquiring new users we have different ways for doing that and it's mostly decentralized so current affiliate methods is not something that i personally believe in but again a different story not not for this um uh, matter uh so yeah and for of course the the most recent part is the tomorrow conference which is the Europeans' uh, biggest crypto, NFT, and metaverse conference, uh, which was held in Belgrade here in May. Uh, and we gathered uh, around 6,000 um, physical attendees and over 15,000 online attendees through a metaverse platform. Uh, we organized several different VIP events, dinners, uh, a huge party with DJ Maceo Plex. I mean, people who were there know what kind of a, a crazy time that was in may uh but it was overall one really huge experience for the community especially since we at some point started to become uh well the balkans became the hub of web3 space uh we had so many influential people joining us on stage um, some of the people like uh, Mr. Craig Sellers from the Omni Foundation and Tether, one of the founders of Tether, Stablecoin. Then we had Joel Ditz, who was one of the pioneers of the Ethereum network, working closely with uh, Vitalik Buterin. 
Um, I'm not going to name them all. I mean, many people, of course, know, and we still have like a lot of presentations to publish on our YouTube. So everyone is welcome to check them out. Uh, of course, that's what I'm always going to, to say. I mean, this is this is in short. I mean, I have a lot more to say, but I'm going to, you know, like let Mantelena to drive this panel. No, but please uh, give us a bit um, more insights so that uh, this will help flow the the flow of the discussion. Um, mm -hmm. How 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 is the disposition of the of the people you connect and uh, the people you invite to join you on this uh, great conference? Um, uh, are, are, are they positive about the developments and uh, the progress of the space? Uh, do you see concerns growing or um, is, just, is it just a transitional phase and maybe a um, pre predictable phase? Uh, mm -hmm. This of, uh, for us, the yeah. not that optimistic people. Okay. Okay, so so as we gathered a lot of futurists who actually are also among the pioneers of the crypto space and blockchain space, um, mainly mainly there is a, a mutual consensus about the future uh, that this uh, emerging technology will bring in the future. And I might say that even we have uh, successfully passed some sort of a phase one, uh, of the Web3 um, uh, process of development, uh, generally because uh, we, we've been, I mean, the world has experienced the COVID period. There was an emerging need for, for um, uh, let's say, um, an alternative way to a physical contact in between people uh, separated by distance. So I think that Metaverse, uh, not just as a virtual platform, but as a overall society, future society that will definitely grow bigger in time, um, is definitely something that we'll see further being developed and, and further being uh, even decentralized, uh, not just by the platforms like uh, Decentraland and Sandbox and you know like the most popular ones, but we are talking about different use cases that will emerge uh, as the time goes by, because we, um, I mean, as we are all citizens of one planet, we will always seek, uh, first of all, we will always seek the ways of immort immortality, right? And on the other hand, we will always seek um, a ways to overcome the issues or the troubles of distance. So I think that as we move forward with the digital economies and digital governments, and as they will be growing faster and faster and being you know, widespread across the globe, I think that we'll have a lot more use cases for metaverses where we'll, we'll have emerged, I mean, we'll have uh, growing societies there. Uh, I won't say that's going to happen anytime soon, of course, but, um, some of the people that I had the chance to meet at different conferences, including the Tomorrow Conference, are actually focusing on um, actually uh, uh, building up resources within the metaverse, which will replace the traditional um, uh, ways of harvesting energy currently existing on our planet. So we will have... Uh, different resources of different types of energies that will be utilized within metaverses. And of course, as, as even Antonius, I, I really gladly listened to his uh, speech and, and it was really something that hit the spot, um, is about the interoperability and uh, digital governance and identities that will be basically the foundation of this new future uh, digital um, uh, society. Right. So uh, there, there, there will be a lot to work on, especially since, as I said, the, the phase one um, currently um, is, let's say it's not ending yet, but I think it will, there will be some, um, let's say, lack of interest in building quality content within the existing metaverse platforms until we reach a new uh, point in time which will 
again raise the interest and uh, you know uh, gain the popularity for the platforms themselves and the benefits that will be um, that will sprout basically from from those events. Um, as I said, I, I don't know what the future will bring, but you know many people actually uh, can agree that this is definitely the future and uh, the way that we should be focusing on because we have gone a long way for thousands of years. Um, uh, the evolution has developed our senses and different abilities. And I think this is just, you know, a natural way that that we will, you know, th that we will direct ourselves for the future. <laughs> Alexa, do you agree? I do. Uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. So I do definitely agree, right? So we do not know what the future brings, right? But I would also add that we always continue to explore and to look for different ways. And uh, sometimes we find a better one, sometimes we actually make it worse. But I'm sure that as we keep going, right, like the new ways of, to tackle this issue will be growing and the decentralization itself um, will mitigate um, some of the uses that we, are, that we actually have to, have to use now, right? But with the time, and the central, as the centralization grows, as in the industry grows, and the number of user, users grows, that will also bring results itself. So um, you're working with the public sector, you're working with the private sector. Uh, do you see this becoming a trend? Because you yourself invested your uh, time on building... Um, uh, your, your own community, your uh, own audience. Uh, you see this growing, uh, you see the interest uh, growing, uh, and do you see the need for uh, um, versions of reality as such, or versions and methodologies that a DAO could solve? Um, uh, do, do you see that um, there are emerging new needs uh, through all these platforms? Well, I'm aware of, I mean, of course, the need there, there is there, right? But uh, I wouldn't say that it's a common topic. Of course, there are projects out there that are tackling these issues and researching how um, how this this can be solved in different ways. But I wouldn't say it's a really trending topic, at least not from my experience and the projects I've been working. Um, however, like. I would like to also to point out that uh, like the number of projects out there is probably over 7,000 and I cannot be aware of each and every of them, like what they're doing and what um, what issues they're tackling. So take this, take my answer with reserve and uh, um, like from my experience, I couldn't really share much of the many of the projects that are focused on this. Um, I am I've been reading a lot, I've been hearing a bit, um, but from my experience, is not really something that is much of a, much of a trending. Laho, what's your take on that? I don't know. I have to first of all uh, come out as a, as a metaverse skeptic a bit. Uh, I may be the only one here or in minority. Uh, Bernhard but, uh, wants to take Florida. <laughs> uh, I'm not anti metaverse. Don't like, don't get me wrong. I'm just very uh, skeptical of this happening in the in one particular metaverse. Okay, because it it somehow is. Um, it's contradictory to me that we are all, all here because of the decentralization and then the idea is that we will all end up on the same, in the same place. So this is a bit of, I can't really swallow this yet. Uh, I'm not saying it won't happen. Maybe it will be some sort of decentralized metaverse. But to be honest, metaverse is starting to sound as uh, ICO did in 2017 where everyone is just throwing it around uh, and hoping it will catch something with it. 
Uh, so I one very interesting point I didn't want to interrupt Zoran actually I tried to but I was muted so I want to ask now uh, when you said uh, that there were people you met that uh, tomorrow I think you said uh, who were developing resources in the metaverse do you have an example of that because that seems very interesting uh, you said they were developing some resources in the metaverse that they would use to harvest energy if I'm quoting you correctly or that seems right. super interesting because this is actual, some actual interesting use for me in, in this stage and Zora, you're, you're, if yeah, i understood yes. you correctly Your yes, is yes. Frozen, but we can hear you can you see me i mean is it moving? yeah it works for I me if i can see about metaverse with not good connection so. <laughs> okay well uh we should definitely next time try to do this in the metaverse <laughs> so yeah i I only accepted this invitation because I thought I was traveling to Greece. Then I realized it was an online event. Next time we'll be in Thessaloniki. Hey, I'm yeah. there with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so one one of the projects that I uh, got recently uh, introduced to was actually um, uh, some sort of a, uh, an instanced uh, platform uh, for developing different metaverses where each of the metaverse would uh, actually be in a sort of a cluster uh, assigned with different types of resources which can be harvested for building i mean it's pretty much like roblox or fortnite you know kind of a thing but this is this will now be uh like the compensation for the platform um developers and participants uh, as they will be able to benefit from the harvesting of the resources which can be found within the metaverse. So, I mean, it's it's pretty like a futuristic, again, uh, point of view that is not currently applicable to the situation that we now have. But let's say that the energy consumption, which we would normally have for powering up a certain, let's say, a data center or infrastructure in general, for metaverses will be minimized in the physical world and extended in the metaverse. So, so the businesses and uh, and uh, uh, individuals within the metaverse can actually use them just like they would be using them in the physical world. Uh, th that was that was the basic concept. Of course, as I said, this is the project that is not like going to happen tomorrow or anytime uh, soon. Of course. But this is something that is actually tackling the issue of the energy crisis, for example, that we are facing currently, because, you know, despite if, whether we want to admit it or not, we are still on a planet with limited resources, right? And whether we are going to find a way to explore other planets or other, you know, like out of our solar system, within the solar system or outside of the solar system, you know, places, in order to harvest harvest energy from from those places or are we going to build something similar on our own planet this is up to debate but uh, uh, there is a certain potential in actually looking for alternative ways within the metaverse again yes i i understand the skepticism i understand the you know like lack of focus or even faith in the future of metaverse but I'm just saying that the technology is already giving us the option to explore it in the future. It's just on us to find a way how to do it. Will we have the option to be out of it? And that's a question that I would like to address to Out of the metaverse or out of this planet? <laughs> Elon would love your comment. <laughs> Well, okay, well, yes. Yeah, go ahead. I, 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 I think that, I mean, as, as I said, there is a certain timeline probably, you know, and there will, you know, pass a lot of time before something like this even, even hits the ground, right? Uh, I think that, I mean, it will be up to us to, to figure out what the benefits of each of the options are. So I think that we'll still, I, I mean, there are things that, cannot be replaced in the physical world like human touch like the emotions you know things that we as a humankind as as even all the living creatures on the planet 
actually depend on the the future of the race is depend on right so i think those things can definitely not be replaced but like the way we communicate can be changed can be improved right i mean we used to communicate in the past you know by by hand gestures or drawing little pictures on on the cave walls you know and then mimicking some sounds and stuff like that then we developed languages now we we i mean even here present we are communicated from communicating from different parts of the world even you know and this is why i'm saying the communication is something that is developing over time and this is why this it's easily to expect that it will continue to develop further right and some of the things that we cannot replace like um I don't know. For example, my brother lives in the States. I see him approximately once to twice a year, right? But I mean, even in the metaverse, in some potential future metaverse, you know, I could be with, you know, spend time with him on a daily basis. We can exchange, hand over digital goods to each other. We can, you know, like do all sorts of things that we are prevented to do as the current situation prevents us to do it, right? So th there are possibilities that we definitely need to explore. Um, we are allowed to be skeptic about it. And I, first of all, I always welcome skepticism because that's what keeps us moving forward. Uh, but of course, we always need to keep our options open and, and I mean, follow follow what the, what the industry and the technology is guiding us to. Uh, if I may say, communication reflects our thoughts and thoughts of what we are. So it's interesting how we are changing through these uh, new communicative tools. Uh, Ilya, the right to opt out from all this, and in general, your sources in your academic uh, research, uh, are there enough answers or uh, thoughts um, in the area you're researching? Well, I would like to continue. Have? I would like to continue the the conversation uh, on on what Zoran already already brought brought forward, and um, whether or not we can we can exit uh, the metaverse or not is I believe is is is, is somewhat of a self explanatory uh, answer, uh, and much as uh, it was previously discussed, metaverse is just a tool. Uh, much like uh, much like online discussions, much like, much like um, telephones and 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 etc. This is a, a step of uh, technological advancement. And if I believe everybody who um, who has any sort of connection with the metaverse has seen, uh, for example, Ready Player One uh, and Ernst Klein's uh, work, and uh, you can see. Um, whether or not uh, such 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 kind of uh, of uh, of community um, can can be brought brought forward by um, by following um, this this kind of this kind of trend. Now, similar to Vlaho, I'm also currently uh, not the biggest. Uh, um, I'm I'm one one of the um, current uh, critics of what uh, of what what the metaverse is, um, simply because. Uh, while looking at the emerging, uh, like the emerging of Web three, uh, we are looking at all sort of uh, projects that step on 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 the idea of the technology, but don't utilize its full uh, use. I should say, um, and we we see this with NFTs, we see this with uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, even with the, the uh, DAOs, uh, which uh, I, I would be really interested in uh, hearing Alexis uh, insight on this. Um, but my personal opinion is uh, that uh, every 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 technology uh, starts with its misuse and uh, its in and and finding its uh, limits and and how how we can uh, we can work around it. Now. Uh, I believe that the the thing that we should be looking at is that this uh, this process of trial and error and improving the technology um, is is something natural. However, uh, connected to the topic of, uh, of of this meeting, it should not come at the expense of uh, 
essential resources such such as energy and uh i'm i'm i really want to kind of uh, bring back the the subject to it uh, to uh something that um antonio's bromas uh, brought forward and that is um basically that one question will metaverse raise or decrease uh energy consumption and uh gas emissions and uh and um how how we can we can we can tackle this um now what Zoran said as, as an example is really fascinating and I'll, I'll be um, interested to hearing more um, in terms of uh, this this type of metaverse and, and the way uh, it is uh, optimized in, in terms of energy. Um, if you can share anything more uh, on that uh, would, be, would be really interesting for me. For example, does that metaverse uh, like is it built on blockchain technology or uh, on on something else and uh, if 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 it's built on blockchain then um does it does it step on uh, proof of work or some sort of other uh, consensus mechanism because um in my personal experience uh, the way um that we should look towards uh, when it comes to um going green um, when when talking when when talking about uh, metaverses and and uh, crypto and blockchain as a whole um, is uh, simply switching up the formula and we can see lots of lots of businesses um, that are already um, making these amendments. For example, we saw last month's uh, uh, Ethereum that uh, switched from um, proof of work to um, proof of um, <clears throat> Sorry, uh, proof of uh, of stake, uh, and uh, this was basically done because of the uh, energy implications and uh, its its overall uh, way of of, of affecting uh, energy consumption as as a whole. Um, so, yes, this is a really big uh, topic, and. Uh, I I'm looking forward to hearing uh, the rest of the participants comments yeah. on this. I, I, I just wanted to say that, yes, I will <laughs> gladly share the, the information uh, with you and explain, of course, the further uh, concept. So, yeah, it's not a problem. I mean, we can take it offline because I'm not sure if we want to cover any any of that now. So I think other participants want to pitch in as well. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to add that in terms of like this technology, right, in order for it to scale and actually progress further, what needs to happen, the regulations need to follow, right? So you mentioned uh, Ethereum, right, and switching from proof of work to proof of stake, right? So what has actually happened is the SEC and the US is actually now using that to categorize um, Ether as uh, securities potentially, right, that brings on a lot more a lot more issues, right? In order for projects actually to be able to be able to support the energy to support like the energy save, right? In finding alternative resources, the regulatory environment has to be able to support that uh, that adoption. And also metaverse is technology, right? Like it's uh, it has endless uh, possibilities, that's for sure. But also it has it carries many many risks. And um, it's a brand new uh, technology. People are super fascinating uh, with it. But uh, what I'm also personally not a huge fan is, as some of you on this panel, um, for the reason that I think metaverse is um, a lot of a buzzword and it's actually not being utilized for what it can be. For example, there was an article about a kid who cannot go to sleep without his wear glasses on. Then there is a case of a guy who just spent 24 hours in Metaverse because he has built a fantastic apartment and a fantastic life up there while his real life is uh, not very nice. So what happens is that people are actually using a metaverse to escape the reality, which might not be the best, instead of actually focusing on improving their real lives rather than living a good life in metaverse. On the other side, I saw a video about like a old guy who really, really wanted to go to Thailand at least one more one more time in his life, 
but he couldn't because he was unfortunately like you know too sick and all to actually do so so what they did they used metaverse to take him to thailand and you could in that video you should you could actually see the actual joy that uh that metaverse brought to him so those are those are some of the good and the bad sides of the metaverse and it really depends on us on how we will be using what we've been seeing recently is that the brands right the really really big brands are entering and if they are entering metaverse using nfts um as a, i mean the good side that they're expanding the community they're growing the community but what is actually happening is that very centralized entities are promoting a decentralized industry and what happens there is that you don't have the proper education you just what have is again the relationship between a business product a user slash buyer and you don't have actually education around the actual fundamentals of the industry and how this industry and how decentralization can actually solve many many of the of the web two problems so in short that's my issue with my thoughts. it definitely is uh, is an amazing technology that can bring a lot of good but unfortunately i think we will still have a really really long way to go before we see good use of metaverse and until then we'll unfortunately probably be seeing a lot of um a uh, lot of unhealthy use cases of the metaverse that could actually harm the industry and harm the industry fundamentals as a whole in the longer run thank you alexa there are so many points here um i mean does the dilemma uh environment um healthy environment versus security personal uh, data security um, should be passed on to the users the end users of technology or should the uh, developers and policymakers solve it before uh, opening it to the public uh, then um, should we have the leap of progress uh, uh, without the preparation through educational um, uh, the, the, edu the, the educational phase to be completed. Uh, in Balkans, we have really low, uh, uh, we're ranking low to digital skills. Uh, however, uh, there are so many interesting and talented, um, uh, successful stories uh, building on the space. So um, how do, how do we bridge all this? Uh, Vlaho, because you will have to go. And then Ivan, if only your mic is better. Uh, well, I think it's okay now. Uh, I was trying to make a nice... Let's try. If it's still breaking, I think it will be difficult for us to listen to you. Vlaho, would you go? Would you like to go ahead and then try with Ivan? Yeah, uh, just one, uh, one thing. I'll be brief. Uh, I'd really hate if, uh, and I'm saying this as a lawyer, I'd really hate if we let the metaverse be uh, modeled by lawyers and policymakers and politicians and stuff like that. And I also would really hate, and I actually wrote an article on this, so I put it in writing, I still wasn't sued. Uh, I, uh, my, my idea is that uh, we should, uh, if we are forbidding uh, people who are younger than 18 to vote, I would forbid people who are in the last 18 years of their life to vote. I think it's only fair uh, because we know the median age all of us will reach, you know, and for instance, I uh, really uh, he is very dear to me, but my grandfather, who is 97, should not have the right to vote. Uh, and the same way, I really don't want everyone to have their say about how metaverse will look like. Okay, and I'm already, I think when metaverse is decided, the fate of the metaverse is decided on, I will already be too old to vote, to vote for it. So I'd really like to leave it to the young, to the developers, and to everyone who still has uh, ideals in their life, rather than the politicians, lawyers, and policymakers. Well, at the end, the investors will decide. And we're done here. <laughs> Ivan, can we hear you? Uh, do you hear me now? Yes, please. Uh, there is this uh, famous uh, American professor uh, who says code is law, law is code. Uh, who will... No. Who will... No. No. Uh, no. <laughs> 
Good is not law. <laughs> Well, Thank well, you. I just would like to Ivan? point uh, that uh, proof of stake networks uh, had to happen, so blockchain technology could be more use usable, usable in games, uh, usable like uh, unlimited number of transactions, because the proof of stake technology could not uh, support that, and. Uh, at, at the end, uh, you, you, you had to choose between the decentralization, the true decentralization, like Bitcoin, like Ravencoin, like, like project uh, based on proof of work, or to, to have uh, blockchain technology usable in everyday life. You know, for that, you, you simply must switch to proof of stake. That's, that's, that's one of the points. And uh, of, of course, uh, uh, regarding healthcare in the metaverse, of course, we must make some uh, interactional uh, games which will uh, require physical interaction. Because kids otherwise will just uh, stay into their chairs and they will not have enough physical. Oh, sorry. Maybe someone else can continue. Um, Bernhard, would you like to, to comment? Yes, as a physicist, How the need I would for insist that physics is <laughs> the defining boundary. We cannot escape the law of physics. We cannot. Until now. <laughs> so far, yes. Newton so far. was pretty right. I mean, Einstein did a few refinements, but uh, otherwise it, it still holds true. So <laughs> let's but see. What... But um, uh, Bernard, what I, I would like to ask you is uh, whether uh, the the need for decentralized do uh, do we need something more than the institutions and do the decentralized models of organization are covering this need? I mean, are you asking me as a European Commission official? What answer do both. you expect me to give you? Please give us both. In front of a panel of the Western Balkans, where all are potential candidates to join the Union. I mean, <laughs> of course, I can only say we have. Go the ahead. Answer. This is the place. We have heard that earlier from the European Parliament. But no, in reality, and then also what uh, this was quite inspiring here, also sort of. I'm trying also in my mind to compare to last year's uh, summit, where it was more last year expanding the, the, the current uh, physical universe into the metaverse. Law, conflict resolution, we've heard a little bit earlier today. And now the second half of today's summit is so much further into the metaverse, even to the extremes, I'm looking at you, Zora, where you actually say, can we decouple the, the physical universe from the metaverse? And that's why I was shouting as a physicist saying, you still have some kind of somewhere the energy needs to come to make this whole thing happen. And actually looking at the Western Balkans, I see ourselves at the switching point. Uh, winter is coming in the you know, Game of Thrones sense as well. Uh, energy crisis, uh, bad air, people dying from uh, pollution and so on in the region. And uh, people say, oh, but we have to burn like night because what else should we do? So can we afford having a metaverse or developing further into the metaverse at the expense, uh, like we have heard earlier, uh, of the biodiversity, maybe our own biodiversity? Or will the metaverse become something like an internet of things, which is much more like a normal universe with a little bit IT add-ons that um, lurk somewhere in the corner and then make our life easy? Of course, it will not be the one or the other. And that goes back to your question, uh, Mantalena. Now, is it a, a decentralized one, which the German railway system, you could say, is decentralized, and then you cut uh, two fiber optic cables and the whole thing is down for days. So I think that the decentralization, centralization is happening on different layers. And then we're back to my hierarchy as well here. But uh, 
we have to find maybe the metaverse giving us the room and the flexibility to be diverse, to be uh, multilateral, whatever. But at the very end, if we only have one metaverse from meta, uh, isn't this then the, the hierarchy and the absolute concentration of power and leave alone all the security aspects? I mean, we have the, the gaming story from Ivan, where you build a gaming metaverse. So maybe we are hopping between metaverses, depending on our daily needs, health metaverse, whatever. So is that the plurality? But again, do you need a code of law that governs that in a similar and coherent way? Sorry for having only questions and not answers. Yeah, Hello? if I may. Uh, if I may add, yes, it really depends Alexa, how you. Uh, I think it really depends how you define uh, decentralization as a concept, and what decentralization itself entails, as such. And I would also add that the, that humanity has been built uh, at the expense of something else, right? So um, it wouldn't be the first time. And the question is, right? So, you know, what's next, and uh, what would be the price of the of building in metaverse and how actually the humanity itself will embrace the metaverse and will the humanity exist anymore to the point considering the, whole, the climate change and what's happening with the planet and how actually we are looking uh, into the future if we are at all because we are uh, extremely immersed in the new technology and uh, we are definitely going really fast towards it and we are usually more prone to using it in a, in the utility that is not its best <laughs> way of using it and the best utility of it, right? So considering the examples I mentioned, right? Well, metaverse can bring a lot more. And to Zarn's example, right, that he could uh, he could meet his brother more than once or twice a year, right? But will that at a certain point actually replace the replace the actual meet up in real life because you will have that ability to meet up a lot more times than once, twice. And then at some point, well, you will be, well, why would I even travel that far where I can have same to similar experience in the metaverse? And that's what's been happening also already with the travel, right? So in some Asian countries, they're usually, they're literally using metaverse so they do not leave the country itself and they can actually experience the the world outside of the country just by going in metaverse while the actual experience that you can have while being in a place physically and while in metaverse it's completely different right and cannot be cannot be compared and at this point yes correct like we cannot have that physical touch and we cannot have we cannot have like the same feel and sense like we do in the physical life right but you know, at some point we might actually have, and uh, maybe at that point we'll actually forget like the how actual human interaction looks like. I mean, in looking back, like you know, when I was a kid, right? So we were just like you know wanted to. I mean, I'm not that old. Uh, when we were like you know when we were kids, like we just wanted to go out, play with friends, right? You wouldn't come back home until the dark where everyone is, you know, parents screaming after you, <laughs> come back, come back, right? But now the kids don't want to leave their houses. What they do, they just play games. They're completely immersed in that gaming experience in computers. And they do not have the need to actually go out, play with friends, play in the mud, play in the snow. They, they just play uh, games. And that's their experience, and that's how they're actually building their childhood upon. And if you actually provide them with a metaverse experience that is literally a combination of potentially like a real world experience and that gaming experience, the the real life and the real life experience will com will become completely unnecessary. Also, with the remote work. Right Be before COVID, like people, oh, how can you work online? Like that doesn't exist. COVID hit. What happened? Everyone went online. Now no one wants to go to the office. Even the people that actually enjoyed working in the office. So what happened? I mean, I've been working online for oh, since my day one, right? But there are people that were actually involved in their co work with their coworkers and actually having the social life and that's having the social element. But that got lost. Right. So 
um, we keep replacing actual life with technology and metaverse is really, really a big level up that combines basically everything. I mean, now they're literally looking how you can eat and have lunch in metaverse and when that actually, you know, might happen, might not happen or what is, what comes after, what's, what's after metaverse, what is web four, right? So we are not even close to web three right now, but what happens when we actually do get into web three, what's going to be the web four, what's going to be the web five at some point in future. And so I think that as metaverse and the, as the technology that we're building has so, so many advantages, it's also is bringing many, many disadvantages to the humans as a, as a whole. Uh, may I ask here, Rob, because, and then we go to Zoran, and then we go to Nicolas Mialhe for his remarks. Um, uh, may I ask Rob, because he knows some really interesting people who, whose childhood was only with a tin and a ball and a stick, and they found the internet. And then uh, you meet now the generation of the founders of the new internet. And Rob, I'd like your comment on uh, which you think is the major um, challenge between these phases of internet. You have an overview and understanding that goes back in time uh, with an audience that it's global. So please, your comment. Yes, well, I think uh, the Internet of Things was already mentioned once or twice. And um, uh, the term was coined around 1999, but actually um, uh, it was, a, it was uh, a concept already happening in the 50s. It was basic automation. But then in the 70s, it happened with IBM and it was called pervasive computing. But then um, uh, in 1991, Mark Reiser wrote a seminal text, the, com the computer for the 21st century. He was at Xerox, Xerox Park, and um, he was he was basically the father of Ubicom, ubiquitous computing, all the same terms and ambient intelligence for the same kind of uh, same kind of sphere of, of computing. But if you read the text from Mark Reiser in 1991, it's all about disappearing into the environment. So computing power disappears into the environment. And we have for the first time in history, a uh, technology that sees as its success, its own prerequisite for disappearing. So the pencil disappeared into the, the fabric of everyday life, but it did not intend to, neither did the book. But this technology is, is a technology that sets out as a prerequisite for its success, its own disappearance. And that's, um, so this is what we talk about in the metaverse, it, it, it is an inevitability of this disappearing of the computer into the environment. Um, and I fully agree that uh, it can not only be built with policymakers and, uh, and, and lawyers, and, uh, but, um, but it needs to be curated by a very diverse group of people, among which policymakers and lawyers and, and, and technologists and, and venture capitalists. And sort of uh, this, this has to come together in this kind of, uh, in this kind of uh, um, group, because the environment that we talk about is a hybrid environment at the moment. So when we talk about real, it's different for different people. And when we talk about virtual, it's virtual for different people. But um, but we we uh, sort of we have to um, um, come to, come together on this as a, with a group of people. I think it's very important. And then I think just to to to, to finish um, it, the whole discussion really reminds me of uh, of Gramsci, of uh, pessimism of the intelligence and optimism of the will. There's a strong optimism of the will in the Balkans at this moment, as I hear it. And uh, if you couple that with pessimism, pessimism of the intelligence, I think you have the best of both worlds. Rob says so. And uh, Rob is uh, a treasure. So thank you for your comments, Rob. Um, Zoran, uh, collecting all these thoughts and points, I turn to you because uh, you connect with so many people uh, daily. 
from um, our region and beyond. Um, my my main um, my, um, the main question or uh, maybe the thoughts that I'm going around and around is that uh, metaverse seems to be a challenge for uh, those who are into new technologies. Uh, are we forcing it to become popular and should we try to make it popular or normal? And by this, um, I mean that having it as a normal, it will be to be part of our lives without having to provoke or advertise it. Rather than making it popular, it may be something that may extinct at some point or uh, uh, just be not that interesting anymore for the um, general public. What do you think? What, where are we aiming? What are we aiming for? <clears throat> yeah. What well, the... well, I mean, um, definitely this is a new technology. And I think that right at the beginning of, um, you know, when the metaverse was um, basically mentioned as an idea coming from Facebook's CEO, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, um, I think that people have basically jumped on board uh, following the hype and building up the hype around the metaverse and the potential that it might bring without the actual need of, you know, like having it. In all honesty, I don't think that initially there was a single need back in the, I mean, that was like 2017, 2018, when even they, they introduced their own personal Libra cryptocurrency, so-called cryptocurrency, right? Um, I mean, the the idea, the general idea is basically that all the new technologies basically show up uh, as an invention, right? And they are introduced, a, they, they don't have any mass um, adoption until uh, big capital flows in, right? So I don't know, when, when we talk about the show, you know, the invention of radio, Right. I mean, radio was there. Right. People did not know a lot about it. Uh, they were introduced to radio as some magical box that allows you to transfer sound from, you know, like all over the place. Right. But the popularity was actually gained once, you know, radio started being influenced by the capital, by, you know, commercials, ads, things like that, you know, when when there was an actual use case for the radio to be massively used by the population. The same goes for the television, right? I mean, TV initially was very expensive to have to own. We didn't have a lot of TV stations, right? But then again, the capital started flowing into the technology, right? People saw the future of the technology, or some people, believed in the future of it and now we have technology i mean now we have television i mean yeah what's overcome the television now is the internet definitely but again even the internet initially was pretty modest when it was like announced to the public openly after the after the you know the invention of it basically uh so basically what what drives the the advancement of the technology is the capital and is someone i mean when i say someone that is like people like visionaries like people who believe that there are actual use cases not right now present in this time but there will be and um this is basically what's driving that technology and allowing it to grow so, yeah, I don't think we at this point necessarily need metaverse per se, right? Because we still have the ways to adapt to in the physical world to all the challenges that we are experiencing, even though the metaverse can overcome, even now, to some extent, can overcome those challenges. But I still believe there will be future use cases that will allow metaverse to gain a lot more popularity 
and especially i mean we don't know how the how the you know history will turn or the future will turn right uh but uh that is something that we cannot influence we can just jump on board and follow the path and believe that we can do the change we can do something for the better and for the people who are actually you know like afraid to use or think about the metaverse this is just another uh i can freely say it's a generation gap generational gap uh and i believe that as the time will go of course the user experience will adapt uh things will be a lot more user friendly even when it comes to the new technologies not just the metaverse all the emerging technologies that we're talking about today uh user experience has a lot of impact on the future uh some of the things are being driven by the user experience because you know the technology is there but it needs to be allowed for for people for the for the community to actually adopt it like that so i think you know the the idea is actually that we we will still have a, a way to go um and i think there is a bright future of course for the adoption of metaverse and other technologies similar uh, but of course, what the foundation of everything as we talk about, I mean, in the presence of 2022, right, is the definitely the uh, decentralized system, ecosystem that follows the principles of the blockchain technology. And I think that a lot more things will be built upon it, not just the metaverse and the creators um concepts within the metaverse but also things similar to metaverse that will heavily de de be developed on the blockchain and be handed on to the community's hands to guide it further and this is why we have decentralized autonomous organizations this is why we are talking about digital economies the future of of uh basically the future of economy right so I, I, I strongly believe that we will be allowed to use the technology in a way that we want to do it. And I will also agree that there is no lawyer, no regulatory body that should govern uh, the development of the technology. But I still think the, the variety of professionals and people who are taking part in this technology will will be the ones who will be driving it and i strongly believe that we will just have a lot more i'm not gonna say followers because it sounds like a cult but um let's say believers in the future basically <laughs> believers also sounds like a cult <laughs> to, <say. laughs> to some extent yes you're right we, we need to find a name <laughs> we leave it to absolutely agree. yes uh, with his research. Um, uh, Bernhard, should we go on with our closing remarks? Because we have Nicholas and Alexandros. And I really want to uh, hear uh, their their uh, take, their, their insights uh, to what we have heard uh, during the last two hours and also um, from their experience. Uh, Nicolas Miache is uh, representing the Future Society organization, uh, a global organization uh, uh, with uh, deep knowledge on issues of technologies, AI, uh, operating in different crazy parts of the world. Um, and Alexander Spiridonos is the legal advisor and co-founder of the European Law Observatory New Technologies and a dear friend. So uh, I will thank you all, the panel, uh, the panel uh, uh, speakers, uh, for your time, your commitment, uh, your uh, willing to share and your ideas and um, really looking forward to meeting you again in person, uh, live. I mean, not in metaverse so no not not just yet no no we still have time for this um so but please stay stay online if you if you uh have the time uh nicolas the floor is yours and uh, thank you for being with us uh, uh, 
Yes, now we can hear you. Uh, you shared already uh, the manifesto. This is another endeavor of ours. And I'm, I'm, I'm saving time for everyone, so I'm aware I'm Please go ahead. with Alex what is keeping you away from uh, a much needed break. So I'm going to keep my remarks very brief. Obviously, congratulating you for uh, attending this conversation and congratulating Alex and, and Mantarena and the team for bringing that uh, dialogue uh, together. It's, uh, as I have witnessed, a very important and interesting conversation to project ourselves into the future. And as we do that, acknowledge what's going on in the present and honor the past. And, um, you know, what I'm going to say will pertain to two points. Number one is what I think the metaverse is about and how we should approach it and how it intersects with AI. Because a lot of my work, as you can see, with the work that Alex and Matarena and, and myself and, and all teams are doing on AI and the rule of law, speaks to that. They all belong to the field of emerging technologies, which have already emerged and are not falling from the sky. We are, and are emerging from the ground of digital and the very dynamics of digital capitalism. If I turn my attention to the metaverse we do right now, I, I see, again, it's not falling from the sky. It's emerging from digital capitalism of platform economy, data economy, and what we're seeing right now at an industrial scale operating, which is the realm of video games. So the metaverse is going to look like video games on steroids, where we do a lot more of our social life, work, love, um, consume, and not only play, uh, but the very actors uh, leading uh, from a digital capitalism point of view Metaverse are going to, to lead. It's not by mistake that Microsoft decided to buy for 80 billion US dollars, not million, billion, um, Activision. It's not by mistake that uh, uh, Tencent decided to uh, uh, increase its shareholding uh, uh, domination or shareholding part within Epic. Epic is a, a big provider of video games, but also, crucially, a very important developer of a key asset in the video game industry, namely um engines video games engines so how we, the metaverse will unfold in the future is going to resemble a lot how video game has unfolded in the past well second who gets the keys to develop that metaverse and what are the rules and the laws that they have been pushing and the values that they've been pushing is going to be tremendously important i personally worry when i see that meta is trying to lead the charge on the shift to the metaverse and not necessarily as a citizen satisfied with the way in which they have upheld the social contracts uh, in terms of freedom, in terms of equality, in terms of loyalty, in terms of agency, in terms of privacy, in the season one of the digital platform economy. And therefore, I worry that they have not been able to be to gain our trust right now. Why should they gain it in the future? It depends on them and their investors and their regulators. It's partly because of their um, at times toxic behaviors. And I don't want to blame it, blame them, but because they have made the move of rechristen their very proposition meta, it's because of some of their toxic behaviors that people like Mantalena, Alex, myself, I, I felt the need to resort to manifestos. Manifestos are eminently political, if not uh, metapolitical endeavors. And we felt the need to call upon our governments to enact laws and then enforce these laws for a reason. And that's why I think that the, the metaverse will have to be regulated, probably uh, in anticipation. And I know that when we do that, it's far from ideal because we intoxicate a lot of the great innovative power that can emerge from digital economy. Anticipatory regulation is not often very good. For those of you who have lived in uh, communist countries, you know what I mean. It's not necessarily fun and very efficient. Uh, but we might have to resort to that because otherwise we're entrusting a lot of power over our brains, over our free will to these hegemons. And again, this metaverse will not exist in a vacuum, in the vacuum of brain machine interface, in the vacuum of AI technologies. And, you know, I, for one, politically, don't have a lot of faith in the libertarian dream. You know, the internet 1.0, the internet 2.0 always began with, yeah, we, we will have decentralized power, it's gonna go fine. Well, at the end of the day, what do we have? Do we have it? No, we don't. And Libra, which was Christian, ah, again, we look. and so I tend to grow more skeptical over our ability to believe in the utopia of the libertarian dream, because more often than not, it leads to a dystopian counterpart pushed by return on investment and pushed by the digital capitalism laws. That's why on this one, too, I'm uh, what I hear, and I want to believe that the decentralized uh, technologies and leisure technology can help us ensure our freedom in the metaverse. I am extremely skeptical. And to end and to conclude on AI, 
we at Free Society are actively working on institutional innovation to build AI governance frameworks to help operationalize these AI governance frameworks. And when I see Metaverse, what do I see? I see an immensely powerful sandbox where AI companies are going to be able to develop, test and deploy more and more powerful autonomous agents. Large language models, large multimodal models, the works of OpenAI and DeepMind have been nurtured by video games. As you remember, they all use video games as a, as a sandbox to deploy and de to, de to develop their uh, large models. It is going to continue. And remember, if you are not at the table, you're on the menu. Remember that? So we are going to be ever more on the menu of something that we don't control, therefore regulation. And, and to, to, to loop this back to what I began with, so think of more and more autonomous agents who are going to have immense power to rule the way in which we work, we love, we live, we socialize. This has consequences. You know, all of you probably have played a little bit of video games. So you have felt this frustration where I was winning. The computer won over because the way in which the engine was developed and the rules, yes, code is not law, but to a certain extent, code has become law, so we have to take that into consideration. The, we felt that the computer was abusing us. If it's just, you know, a little, you know, game, something which does not bear immense consequences on our standards of living and our quality of life, that's okay. How about this, defining who you love and how you love the person? How will you react? How will you tolerate or not tolerate this abuse of the social contract? And so I want to be very clear here. What lies upon us, I think, in the coming 10 years, if we don't uh, you know, uh, regulate and govern the rise of these technologies well, is, let me be clear, violence. Violence. If our kids are hooked to the systems and they feel abuse, what do you think they will do? Remember when you were younger, what, what, what you did when you felt you were abused. Remember what you did. You think it will do different? Well, I'll stop there, but I hope it's helpful. That's why it's, it's, that's why it's all the more important to have these kind of conversations to project ourselves. Because from a, a Balkan perspective, we are not market makers. We are market takers. We're potential victims. So we have to prepare and know what we want to make the right alliances. And from that perspective, I think they're united with stand. So joining in one way or another, the European drive to regulate these technologies, either by joining the union or finding a way to benefit from the Brussels effect, I think stands to benefit um, uh, the, the, the Balkans' citizens, taxpayers, consumers, lawyers, lawmakers, regulators, policymakers, whoever you want. That's my message. Thank you, Magdalena. It's not fair. Usually with the closing remarks, we try to close the discussion, Nico, not to open another round. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, it's not fair what our previous speakers are doing now in the chat, uh, setting all these interesting points, uh, so strong words. Violence, childhood, children, protection, uh, tolerance and love. Um, uh, and uh, yes, Nico, uh, uh, you give the perspective that these discussions and this debate uh, should end up in uh, form formal uh to be shaped into something formal that will lead us to um safety net possibly for the things that we cannot predict or uh we cannot uh, foresee how we will react in this new environment um uh, alexandre please uh your closing remarks and then the closing of the closing to bernard and rob Thank you, Nicola. Thank you so much. You're muted. You're muted. You're mute. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you very much, Mandalena, and on behalf of uh, Elon Tech, uh, which I represent here. And of course, uh, it is hard to make some uh, closing remarks after Nicola's closing and opening remarks at the same time since we are working together on the Athens AI Roundtable and we've been exchanging ideas for quite some time, I want to say that uh, uh, in summing up the conversation that has uh, already been uh, going on since the last two hours, I would say that uh, Metaverse has been uh, uh, actually a political fact, it has been a technological fact, it has been a legal fact. But in fact, metaverse cannot be denied and progress cannot be denied. So we might say, for example, that metaverse 
is not good because it may replace real life. Because I heard before about the example of uh, somebody who was uh, actually living in metaverse because his or her real life was uh, uh, much, much worse. So uh, he or she wanted to live in the, in the metaverse. So is this really, we have to ask ourselves, is this really bad? Because maybe we can say that uh, somebody can make his life look better, but maybe he cannot. And many people cannot make their lives better. So metaverse and the digital world might be a solution to people who cannot find or to categories of people who cannot find the solutions in the real world because the society has failed so far to give solution to everybody, to give solutions to everybody. So in this way, we have to look about metaverse in a different way than comparing it to the uh, world that we are actually uh, saying that it is the actual world because metaverse is also in a place of actual living, acting, loving, feeling things, uh, communicating, uh, uh, debating, or even contracting or making transactions, or uh, actually metaverse is a part of our real lives as well. So we have to create rules, of course, because decentralization does not mean at the same time destabilization of our societies. And an example, a good example, is the cryptocurrency example and also the digital currency example, because it has been uh, the actual case that so far the currency and money has been one of the powers to empower, uh, to, to, to enforce the power of the states. So if the cryptocurrency is decentralized, then this could destabilize societies, as it has been the case with the cryptocurrency, which could hide illegal activities and international illegal activities. So we do not have to confuse decentralization with destabilization. On the other hand, it is a very easy way to uh, accuse lawyers about many things, but uh, we have to produce some rules which could give access to everyone. Because another very important point to raise, and we have to raise this very important point if we are talking about the European society and the European Union as the union of people, it is that we have to uh, safeguard that everyone has access to this digital world because we are talking about privacy, we are talking about regulations, about higher uh, digital regulations. But on the other hand, there are certain people who do not have access, basic access to the digital world. Now, a huge improvement of the digital identity regulation is uh, actually going to be in force in the uh, next couple of months. Uh, through the European Union procedures. And this digital identity comes at a time when if uh, we see the issue from a global point of view, approximately 1 billion people worldwide do not have an identity, have a, a right to have an identity. And this is a matter of human rights. So if you do not have an identity, you do not have probably access to the digital world. So. In order to make this uh, short uh, intervention a closing remark and not an opening remark, as Nicholas did, I would like to say that finally the digital world and metaverse could be probably the solution to the energy crisis, as we have said in our title of uh, this uh, uh, conference. But on the other way, metaverse is not something that has to come always as a comparison, a contradiction, or a, a just a copy of the real life. But it is one part of our real lives, and we have to make it, regulate it, progress it, move it to go get to get moving forward and make everybody having actual simple easy access to it in order to make their lives better in the digital world even if they cannot do so in the real world so thank you very much Mandalena. 
and uh, thank you all. so much, Alexa. Bernard, Rob, um, a magnifier of the good or an alternative to the bad. Uh, well, I, I think I'm important. leaving more optimistic than we started the conversation. Uh, please, for your final uh, comments and a good night. Yeah, two points I would make. Uh, on the one hand, advertisement, I mean, I've seen some of it before. <laughs> no, we have the Horizon Europe program, we have the Digital Europe program, fully open to the Western Balkans. The things that we discussed can be tested there. We have the sandboxes there. Also, what was discussed before, I mean, what we see now, I mentioned this fiber optic cuts and so on. We have national research and education networks. We have an ESA coming out of this community. I discussed just in the preamble of this meeting, uh, the crowd, the, the grid computing that we have done 15 years ago. There's a plethora of expertise. And uh, also what was discussed here today, try it out, submit proposals. You can do it in a safe environment. And this way you can influence the policymakers. So from that point of view, it's not uh, that you need to fight this on your own. You can uh, do this on a larger platform and then really uh, multiply your impact. And then the closing very positive uh, remarks, me as the Western Balkan guy that needs to get the growth and jobs into the region, it was fantastic to listen to you. This is really going well. I see there's potential all over the place. Things are happening. So this, uh, again, what we discussed before, sort of brain drain. No, this is brain gathering in the Balkans and uh, that looks very good and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks a lot for sharing all of these things today. Thank you so much, Bernard. Rob, you're on mute. Sorry. I fully agree with Bernard that there's a tremendous amount of opportunities in the Horizon Europe uh, program where uh, there's an, an enormous amount of goals uh, where um, we could also, we could do this, Montalena, we could, we could, we could uh, share um, uh, writing uh, of, of, of such proposals, which I think is something that, that everybody should look into. And, um, well, I think just uh, to finish again, I, I keep coming back to this Gramsci quote. I think there's an enormous optimism of the will, enormous optimism of, 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 of making, of creating, of, of thinking that I lack a bit here in in uh, in, uh, in in the West uh, West Western Europe uh, sort of uh, where it's more pessimistic at the moment, and um, I think I would I would having that I think is having like fifty percent of any of every project sort of, and I think it's uh, it was tremendously uh, inspiring to hear this uh, today, so thank you very much for organizing and. Uh, Thank you. Well, you co-organized it as well, Rob. Um, uh, Bernhard, thank you. Indeed, uh, the, the end point of all these discussions is to uh, um, create or provoke uh, new synergies, to open the opportunities to, of uh, the European Union to a larger audience and to um, make this uh, region of the European uh, uh, continent an oasis of innovation rather than a grey zone. Uh, I thank you all. Um, it's been an honour talking with every one of you and uh, uh, hosting this discussion. Um, special thanks to our tech uh, nannies. They took care of us, uh, Babis and uh, Manolis and um, the team behind all this, Eleni, Martina, Gail, thank you all for your efforts and Lorette, of course. Um, we see each other soon, uh, sooner than uh, the next year and uh, closer. Take care and uh, have a good night. Thank you for connecting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks for everything. Well done. Good job. Yeah, you did great. You did great. You, you, really... <laughs> you did great. Uh, always. As yes, always. yes, but but uh, but but you really you really you really did it. You really controlled the whole flow in a in a very I learned from you. I learned from the best. Well, in a very good way. And uh, <laughs> and uh, it was also good that you because you know the situation so well that you could keep 
uh, sort of uh, jabbing people, sort of sort of asking people, doing things. It's been such a joy. I think it's still yeah. recording. So let's leave this for our tomorrow's catch up. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Rob. Okay. Thank evening. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Bye.